Greetings from all corners of the globe. My name is Tiani Mbokota. Uh, I am a servant at AFM Worship and Word, Aslim Lib, under the directorship of our senior pastors, Pastor Joe and Neta Um <clears throat> Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, welcome to today's sharing of the word uh, as we continue with our Kingdom Finances online in, online uh, conference. Uh, today is day four of the conference. Uh, we've already had very powerful preachings in the past three days. <clears throat> and all the preachings are reminding us of the relationships that we have, we have to have with uh, our finances with relation to um, the, our, our spiritual commitment to the Christian faith. Now, today, I'm, we're going to continue on the same path uh, as the theme of the conference suggests. Now, what I want us to do today is to look at money from two like very broad um, denominations. One being, um, one being resources, and the other one being security or a sense of security. Now, <clears throat> uh, let's let's we we're going to base everything like we always do on the Bible. Everything that we do in uh, our church, as far as I know, uh, is based on purely on the Bible. So, all the references that we make, all our points that we try and make, we make them with the basis of the Bible. So. Um, Okay, um, so we're going to start with uh, defining these words. Um, <clears throat> I like to clarify these things before we, we get going with them. So we'll start, we'll start with, with resources. Resources, right? Um, resources is defined in, in the Oxford Dictionary on one of the many dis, uh, definitions. It's not just the one. One of many. Um, it says that <clears throat> resources or a resource is something that can be used to achieve an aim. That's what uh, is said in the dictionary. And then when we look at the word security, again from the Oxford Dictionary, one of the many uh, definitions is that sec security is protection against something bad that might happen in the future. So there are two things that we see there in the, in, when it comes to security. It's protection and future. Hence, I, 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 I mentioned the sense of security. Um, <clears throat> now, when we look at these two definitions, right, uh, if we look at the examples there too, uh, security, what, what is the relationship between security and money? Um, people, a lot of people have retirement annuities, people have investments, um, and, and, and if we go back to that definition, the reason why we put away so much money is that so that we can uh, protect our livelihood in the future. So, <clears throat> so that's that. And then when it comes to resources, uh, examples of resources, resources, uh, where, as far as money goes, as the things that we do every day, we buy food, we put petrol in our cars to go to work. We, we also, if you, you look at, uh, if you want to break it down as per definition, if you look at something like, if you want a house, for example, if you, your, your, your aim is to build a house, what do you need? You need uh, building material. Now, to acquire those, you need the resource that is money 
to be able to acquire those resources to be able to build the house which is your aim and you can put in a couple of uh, Bentleys and Ferraris in there that's your if that's your aim now when when we look at the Bible what does the Bible say about these uh, money denominations uh, namely resource and and security um, our we'll get our scripture reading today <clears throat> from the book of Matthew uh, chapter 19 verses 21 through to 26 uh, it reads as follows uh, this is the new living translation um, version okay it reads as follows Jesus told him if you want to be perfect go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and then come and follow me verse 22 uh, um, but the young man heard this he went away very sad for he had many possessions then jesus said to his disciples i tell you the truth it is very hard for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of heaven <clears throat> i'll say it again it is easier for a camel to go through at the eye of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of god verse 25 um, the disciples were astounded then who in the world can be saved they asked jesus looked at them intently and said humanly speaking it is impossible but with god everything is possible let's bow our heads and pray for the reading of the word father god in the name of jesus we come before you this evening we bring thanks father god for allowing us and affording us this opportunity to share your word father god we would like to ask you to bless the reading of the word of your word lord god let it be you that leads me father decrease me and increase you let it be you that speaks through me the message that you have placed in my heart to share with your servants lord god we ask all this in the mighty name of jesus christ our lord and savior amen <clears throat> now this is a very interesting scripture um uh, basically, this is Jesus responding to uh, a, a rich young man that asked. He asked. I think he asked first, "What must I do to 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 be perfect?" Uh, and Jesus said, he, "His first response was, you must live according to the laws.'" The young man proceeded to ask which laws. Jesus explained to him all the the commandments that are in the Bible. Then. What we have here was a, a continuation of that conversation where the young man said, I've done all that. What else can I do? And then Jesus explained, went on to explain to him what he must do. Now, my, 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 my understanding of this, this is an instruction that Jesus is giving this, this young man. And it also, I believe, it's an instruction for us as well as kingdom uh, uh, dwellers as kingdom citizens that my understanding is that Jesus is instructing this young man to serve the kingdom with his wishes and by doing so he will end up you know his heart his, he will end up following him that that's my understanding of this um if we look at um the act of giving your money to the poor you're feeding the poor and the book of proverb uh, 19 chapter 19 verse 17 says that feeding the poor is like lending to god and 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 um when you when you look at that right it's one of the principles of the bibles for us as people that call, call ourselves children of god it's one of uh, the many principles but Feeding the poor is one of the principles. So it's, it's, it's one form of serving. And what are you serving with? You're serving with your money. You're serving with your, your, your riches. You're serving with your treasure, if we want to put it like that. Now, that, that's what Jesus is saying to this young man in, in verse 21, where, where, where he says, you must 
serve in the kingdom with what you have. That's, that's my understanding of, of what is being said here by Jesus. Now, if we, we jump to Matthew 6, verse 21, Jesus says there that wherever your treasure is, mm -hmm. there the desires of your heart will be. Mm. Now, if we take these two, now we can combine these, these two verses, right? We're just still looking at verse 21 of uh, chapter 19 and verse 6 of, uh, sorry, at verse 21 of chapter 6. If we look at it that way, Jesus is, is saying that wherever you put your, 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 or wherever your treasure is, right? Your treasure is your money, your finances, is your investments, is, that's where your heart will be. So now if we take that and we, we combine it with what Jesus is saying to this rich young man, it means that Jesus is saying, if you take your riches, if you take your, your money, if you take your finances, take them and invest them, if you want to call it that, in the house of the Lord, in the kingdom of God, not only in the house of the Lord, in the kingdom of God, because there's many things that constitute the kingdom. Um, like, I, like we're using the example of feeding the poor. You're also still, that is a, a function within the kingdom. So if you take that money, you use it in that kingdom. What's going to happen? Matthew 6 verse 21 tells us, then your heart will be in there. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means that then you, 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 then you go back to uh, Jesus telling this rich young man saying, then come follow me. Then automatically you are following Jesus. That's, that's my understanding of this. If you take your money, put it in the, in the, in the kingdom of God, then your heart goes there. Then you are there. Then you're following Jesus. Then you're following this instruction very, very, very uh, clearly. Now, let me give a practical example of, 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 of what I just said now. If we look at a church, a church building that was built by the church, co church congregants, 99% of the time, that church as a congregation never it, it, it usually does not diminish does not go down in numbers. Instead, it will maintain whatever it is that started with the church and grow. Why is that? Because people have put their treasure where? In the kingdom. What's the kingdom? They put in their money to build the church. You know, so that's, that's one practical example to say they've invested in the building. The building where, which houses everything that we use to praise the Lord with every Sunday with, with us, Tuesday and Thursdays, sometimes Saturdays and Sundays. But basically, when you look at that, most of those churches that were built by the congregants, usually they will stand for a long time. Why? Because the people are going to look after the building. The people are going to make sure the build, building is, it looks neat. Why? They've invested in that. Another example is one that I picked up from one of uh, these professors that on one of the courses that I attended. Now, he gave an example of that uh, wall there by in, uh, on, on the N1 by Hamas Kran. He says that it used to be a pro problematic area because you've got, you've got two you've got, uh, um, residential areas on either side of the freeway. Now, people used to cross there and there were lots of uh, accidents. The government tried to put fences there. And the people would cut the fence until one uh, project manager came and said, listen, for us to do something sustainable here, we need to get the buy-in of the stakeholders. He, he, for, he, for us, he was trying to explain the whole concept of stakeholders. You need to get the buy-in of the stakeholders, right? So what they did is they called a community meeting and said, listen, we are being given uh, uh, an opportunity to secure this place. How are we going to build a wall? Who's going to build the wall? The community members. And if you've noticed, I, yeah, the last time I checked, that wall is still intact. Why? It's not like the fence that they used to cut. Because they are uh, um, stakeholders. They are part of build. They were part of building that, that uh, uh, wall. What is that? That is where your heart 
or where your tre your your treasures in in the in the form of your strength, your your energy, the time that you've put in, anything that is of that nature, you will always, 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 always. Your heart will be there. If your heart is there, then you will look after it, etc., etc. Now, when we continue to look at the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 19, um, <clears throat> in verses 23 and 24, now, Jesus uh, says, uh, and this is one of the, it's, it's a very interesting, these two verses are very, very interesting, where he says, it's very hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And I think a lot of people, we, we miss, according to me, we misinterpret this uh, uh, scripture to say, uh, I don't understand it to mean that as Christians we must live uh, 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 poor and, and, and not, you know. For me, once again, this, uh, these two verses are propped up by Matthew 6.21. The same concept, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Now, if, you, if, if we look at, um, if we look at what... Jesus is saying is that if you acquire riches by investing all your time, and I mean all your time, right, to acquire these riches, obviously your heart is going to be in those riches, right? Now, when your heart is there in that riches, in those riches, your heart then you will put in even more of your heart to secure those riches, right? Now, that means that there's nothing left of your heart to give to Christ. And that is the basic of basics of us calling ourselves kingdom citizens. It's to give your life to Christ, to, to believe that he is your, 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 your Lord and Savior. That's it. Now, if you've invested all, that, uh, your, all of your heart into you, because that's what happens with most people. Once you acquire something, it's, it, it happens a lot, uh, even with, with a car. There are some people that get so obsessed with their uh, possessions that that is the only thing that matters. They will fight, rather fight with their family members. If a child were to bump that car, it's the end of the world. <laughs> so you, you, you understand that my understanding of this is that Jesus is saying that if your focus as someone who's got possessions is within those possessions, and then it means that you won't have anything to give to Christ or to the kingdom. Therefore, you, can't, you don't have access to that kingdom. That's my understanding. That's, that is what uh, uh, I understand Jesus to be saying. He's not saying that <clears throat> you mustn't have... Uh, 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 anything as a Christian for you to be able to see the kingdom of God. I don't believe that's, that is so. Um, because if, if, if we look at, someone can say, but he's saying, sell all of your possessions and give the money to the poor. Once again, if we, if we use Matthew 6, 21 as your basis, then you will get an understanding that when he says it, 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 it's um, the parable, when he says all your 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 belongings and self, it, it like I said earlier, use your possessions, but let it be enough and in an enough portion of the, those riches that will ensure that your heart is invested in there. For example, when people. Uh, we were talking about retirement annuities earlier. People put most of their money because the average person, if you ask them, what's one of the most important bills that you pay? Is their retirement annuity? It's the the um, uh, funeral, uh, what you call life policies, right? That's where everything else can bounce except those for the average person because then you're thinking. Of the future, that's your security. That's where, so that's where your heart is. That's where, that's so when you when you think portion, you don't give all your money to towards that, but you give a big enough portion to be able to have your heart be vested in there. That's my understanding of what Jesus, what he means when he says 
Sell all your, so anything that is of matter to you or for you, if you take that, you put that where? In the house of the Lord. What's going to happen? Your heart goes there. And that's what, and that's what I understand uh, him to be saying. Now, if we look at uh, what the Bible says about security, um, <clears throat> there are quite a, a few uh, scriptures that we're going to run through quickly. Um, the first one is in the book of Proverbs. Uh, chapter 11, verse 28, right? It says, trust in your money and down go. But the godly, the godly flourish like leaves in spring. And then the next one, uh, Proverbs, the same book of Proverbs, chapter 23, um, verses 4 to 5. Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. In the blink of an eye, wealth disappears, for it will sprout wings and fly away like an eagle. Mm. Um, <clears throat> just two more scriptures. Uh, the next one is in the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, I got it right. Chapter 5, verse 10. Right? And then we're going to jump to 14. Verse 10 says, those who love money will never have enough. <laughs> How meaningless to think that wealth brings to happiness. And then we jump to 14. 14 says, many money is put into risky investments that turn sour and everything is lost. In the end, there is nothing left to pass on to one's children. The last one is from the book of um, John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 17. And it says, and this world is fading away, along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Now, <clears throat> all of these scriptures, they have one thing in common. They tell us that what we have as positions né, will one day cease to be our position, one, one way or the other. Uh, whether it be through uh, what is uh, what we were told in the book uh, uh, of Ecclesiastes that you put it into an investment and the investment collapse. We see, we see that every day, every day, there's, there's no security, basically, put it plain. There's no security in money because there, how many times have we seen or heard or read of stories of people that had everything one moment, mm -hmm. the next moment they don't. You would think, hey, man, this person had billions, but now he's, he has nothing. That's proof, that's physical or worldly proof that what is being said in the Bible is true. <coughs> Excuse me. And, <coughs> and, 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 and also, the Bible is very, very clear on how, why, how you enter into the afterlife. You go there without your treasures. You go there without your wealth, you go there without everything that you have acquired and amassed, you will leave it behind. And that's a fact. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen anyone, I've seen people try, people try and be buried in their favorite cars, and, but your soul is gone. It doesn't mean anything. <clears throat> um, so then we, it means that we should ask ourselves a question. Does money really provide security? <clears throat> that's what we were getting at in this whole thing. Does money really, really, really provide security? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, we've already, I've already, I've already uh, 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 given examples of what happens in the world in, in terms of that. We've seen, we've got examples of people that were once rich and now they don't have anything. Um, so then, the question, the next question is then, what should we rely on? For the security. Now, if you look at the book of uh, Philippians 4, <clears throat> uh, verses 11 to 13, uh, still in the New Living Translation, it reads as follows um, Not that I have uh, ever, no, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to. Be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. 
I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For, I think this is the most important one, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Now, <clears throat> when we look at verse, uh, verse 13, this is uh, uh, Apostle Paul speaking. If we look at verse 13, it says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. And, and there we are, we are, if we go back now to Matthew uh, chapter 19, in verse 26, Jesus tells his disciples that with God, it, he says uh, prior to that, you, humanly speaking, it is not possible. But with God, everything is possible. So I think that <clears throat> this is, uh, 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 it tells us that maybe that sense of security that we have uh, 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 misplaced into money is actually in God or with God. Um, if we see, uh, we, we, we see it in, the, in, the, in the, the scriptures that we read, all those scriptures, that the money will slip through your fingers. The money is going to evaporate. You will die and leave this money. You know, you will lose your money through investments. And sometimes people will say, no, it's because it's a bad investment. It's not all, always bad investments. I mean, look at uh, just in the beginning of the lockdown, Sasol, about 200 odd billion rands was wiped out. Sasol was one of the best performing companies. So it's not about investing in a good company. It's not guaranteed. That's the, the, the bottom line. It's not guaranteed. So <clears throat> um, how, how do we view money as uh, citizens of the, of the kingdom? Is it a resource or is it our sense of security? Um, well, the Bible, uh, in, the, in, the, in the book of uh, 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 through to 19, <clears throat> it reads as follows. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud okay. and not to trust in their money mm -hmm. which is unreliable mm -hmm. or oh, let me read it correctly which is so unreliable mm -hmm. trust their trust should be in god amen who richly gives us all we we need for our enjoyment tell them to use their money to do good they should be rich in good works and generous to those in need always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that <clears throat> they may experience true life. Now, I think this scripture, it sums up everything very, very, very neatly and very nicely. Because number one, <clears throat> excuse me, because number one, it says, we should not rely on the riches because they are so unreliable. Mm -hmm. Number two, we should put our trust in God only, not in money, not in riches, not in our, what we call for the, the false sense of security. Number three, we should use our money to do good and be generous. And the last point, if we do this, all of this, then we will be storing up our treasure as a good foundation for the future so that we can we may experience true life. This is life here on earth and life in the afterlife or eternal life. So this is one of the best investments that you can make because whatever you do now, you will reap the rewards now and also reap the rewards in the afterlife. Now, in conclusion, we can see that God requires us to use our treasure, our riches, our finances, our money as a resource to serve in the kingdom in order to have this sense of security that we have placed in money, which is a resource. And 
And we, 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 we are told in the book of Matthew uh, 6, 21, that where we put our treasure is where our hearts are. And uh, how much of this treasure we decide to put in the kingdom is up to us. Uh, we must just bear in mind that Matthew 6, 21 tells us that when we do that, the amount that we put in there should be sufficient to warrant that our hearts are in there. Mm. Now, we've heard from Monday uh, through to yesterday that we are guided by the Bible. The Bible guides us as in, in what to do uh, in, in our everyday life. We, we were told about tithing. It's very important. We were told about uh, offerings. And we were told about serving in the kingdom. <clears throat> Now, let us, let us serve in the kingdom with our finances. Let us serve to be able to expand the kingdom of God. We don't have to only um, give offering or pay tithe. I think it was Brother Zulu on Tuesday who made something that I, I actually laughed at, where he said, "You, how long have you been in the church for? Eh? You go into church, we're still sitting on those plastic, black plastic chairs, which is a fact. So, you know, doing something for the church, you don't have to buy chairs. Doing something for the church, you are serving. And that is what is required of us as kingdom citizens. Now, let us, in, you know, to sum this thing up, my understanding of what finances are, they are a resource <clears throat> that can, uh, that, that allow us to serve and therefore ultimately get the, a, 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 a sense of security for now and for the afterlife. Um, that is the message that I had for today. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. The conference is still continuing um, throughout the week. Just be on the lookout for uh, uh, our advertising posters for the next speakers. It's, it's, uh, it's happening throughout my understanding, throughout the week, all the way up through to Sunday. Uh, it's also on the very same platform that we are on now. Uh, and other platforms, uh, there are people that are the f uh, formed watch parties so that if you don't have access here, then you, you can watch through them. Uh, we appreciate your support very, very, very much. We see your comments. We like the likes. We love the loves. Um, be warm and be safe and have a blessed evening. Good night. <laughs>